Gracious Lord, send your spirit to be among us this day, that I may share your words with this group, and that your spirit may guide and help them to hear what they need to hear. We ask for this in your name. Amen. Amen. I visit with my spiritual advisor once every three weeks, and I appreciate the opportunity to share some things about my spiritual journey and to think about how God is at work in the normal things that happen with us each and every day. It helps me to find balance. Now, every time when we begin our discussion, we go through a simple breathing experience. It's an effort to try and make sure that we block out all the things that are going on in the world, the traffic that's caused me a problem to get there, you know, the problems that I have at church or in my life. It helps me to focus on God. <clears throat> and when we start, we always offer a prayer, a prayer asking God to be with us as we have, uh, have our discussions. That's not the only time I've experienced breathing exercises. We do it, I've done it also in yoga. Maybe some of you have done it with yoga too. You exercise by breathing, and breathing maybe helps you to, to calm yourself down, to relax yourself, or maybe to help you to focus on your body and what's going on with your body. Well, I just want to remind you, I think all of you actually know this, that the Hebrew word for spirit is called ruach, but it doesn't just mean spirit, it also means breath, God's breath being upon us. So when we breathe in practice, it, it helps us to bring God into our lives. So the word in Hebrew, as I mentioned, is ruach. In Greek, the word is pneuma, which also means both breath and spirit. We still use that kind of phrase, pneuma, even in our language today. If you have trouble breathing, we say that you might have pneumonia or we use the word pneumatic. It's another, lots of expressions that help us to think about both breath and the spirit. Well, today is about the spirit, God's spirit, and, and kind of, I'm gonna ask you if you'll join me in just a, an easy group exercise. This isn't gonna be difficult for you. I'd ask you if you would please to close your eyes and, and to start paying attention to your breathing. Maybe you can breathe in and out slowly, maybe even counting a little bit, up to four as you inhale and up to four again as you exhale. Breathe silently and slowly. And as you do so, is it possible that you can let all of those things that are in the world outside go away from you today, at least for a little time? Whatever challenges you, see if you can let it go as you breathe. And then see as you continue to breathe in and out if you can focus on God today, especially on the Holy Spirit. As we breathe in and out, I'd ask you to think about how the Holy Spirit may have changed your life, how the Holy Spirit is guiding you today. As you continue to breathe in and out, I'm going to offer a portion of a prayer to the Holy Spirit that's offered by the people who go to a cursio. It's a way for them to focus their hearts when they get together on the Spirit and the Spirit's guidance. It goes like this. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. All the power of the Spirit we ask to come and be with us today. Thank you for doing that for me. Please open your eyes. Breathe normally. Today is Pentecost, and it is all about the Holy Spirit. But it's not the only time that we hear about the Spirit in Scripture. We can go all the way back to Hebrew Scripture and hear passages that talk about the Spirit of God. A good example is from the book of Judges in chapter 15, when it says that the Spirit came down upon Samson. The Spirit of God came down upon Samson. And because the Spirit did that, Samson became powerful once again and was able to kill his enemies. 
Or we can reach all the way back to the very first passage that we find in Genesis where it says that the breath from God swept over the face of the waters. The breath, the Spirit of God over the face of the waters. And in even today's lesson, we hear Peter reading, or we hear Peter in the book of Acts speaking to the people. He actually quoted a passage that's from the book of Joel, chapter 2. And just a little part of it says that God will send God's Spirit upon all flesh. The Spirit of God being with us. It continues even in the New Testament. In today's passage, we hear Jesus saying that he will send an advocate to be with us. The Spirit will guide us and watch over us. So we can find the Spirit in lots of parts of Scripture. But you know, we don't really spend a lot of time thinking or talking about the Spirit, do we? It's really today, the Pentecost day, which is so special to think and, and to consider what the Spirit means in our lives. I want to talk about each of the passages that we have in Scripture today. I want to start with this one that we had from the book of Genesis. The people of Babel had, had built a huge tower, climbing all the way up into heavens, and the story is really kind of one that's similar to what Adam and Eve did in the Garden of Eden. In this case, the people of Babel <clears throat> wanted to eliminate the divisions between humanity and divinity. They wanted to go all the way up to heaven and be like God. And God thought, that's not right what you really should do. So God decided that God would scatter all the people to all corners of the earth, give them different languages so they could no longer understand each other. That was their punishment. So you, if you can imagine that God at that time split all the people apart, then let's go forward to this reading we have from the book of Acts, and God brings us all back together again. For the people that came to Jerusalem on that day of Pentecost, came from all parts of the world. That's what we read about. They all spoke different languages. But as they listened to the apostles speak, they all heard the same message. The people were all united once again because of the work of Jesus and because of the power of the Spirit. Lots of people spoke, but everyone clearly heard about Jesus, the Messiah. There's a portion of this passage that we didn't read today. It's Peter describing Jesus. It's really kind of a first lesson in catechism, if you wish. He said, Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs. God did them through him for you. But as you yourselves know, this man was handed over according to the plan that God had. And you crucified him and killed him by the hands of those outside of the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. And people heard that message. And they were moved by what he had to say, and they immediately turned, many of them, and decided to follow Jesus. Lots of them were baptized, we're told. It's an example of the power of the Holy Spirit. Now I think about the Holy Spirit. I experience the Holy Spirit in two different ways. First, I think about the Holy Spirit as a presence. God present with us in the Holy Spirit. The presence supports us, encourages us, gives us advice and encouragement, helps us to communicate with God. But I also think about the Holy Spirit as a power. We experience that in the Pentecost story in Acts today. It's, we're told that the power of the Holy Spirit descended upon the apostles. It came, we're told, as if it were a wind, as if it were the breath of God coming down. And the Holy Spirit placed tongues of fire on the heads of the disciples. And I believe it was the power of the Holy Spirit given to the apostles that allowed them, that helped them to speak in the various language that they spoke in, or at least to have the people hear them in their own language. 
Because everyone that was in Jerusalem that day understood exactly what was being said. I think of it as a miracle of the Holy Spirit, very similar to the miracles that Jesus performed on his own. That's why I say that the Spirit is a power, the Spirit is a force. Before I begin my writing my sermons each week, I always pray to the Holy Spirit and ask that the Holy Spirit will guide me in what I say. And most times before I start my sermon, I ask once again that the Holy Spirit will make sure that the words that I speak are the ones that come from God. I do my best. But what's most important is that I know that the Spirit is active in the community because sometimes after I've given a sermon, people will come up to me and share what they heard. And different people will share different information. Because the Spirit is helping them to hear what they need to hear. Let's take a look at the psalm for just a minute. In the psalm, we're we're praying about the glory of God's creation, but it is also about the work of the Spirit. So we hear first the beauty of God's creation, and we hear about the wisdom that God had as God created all things. And we even hear a little bit about God's humor in this passage today. For we're told that God was the one that created the sea monster, the Leviathan, right? And we're told that God did that just for the sport of it, just to have a little fun with us. But then if you listen carefully in the psalm, you hear about the spirit, the spirit who is active in creation each and every day. The words are, the spirit was sent forth and created life once more and renewed the face of the earth. It reminds us that the spirit of God is active In the cycles of life and death, they're all held in the hands of God's Spirit. Now, for most of this few months, the last two months, we've been going sequentially through Scripture. It connects with exactly what's happening on those days, the days that we experience. So we went through a lot of Lenten studies, and then and then we had the great feast of Easter. And then after that, we had times when Jesus appeared to his followers, all consequent, uh, concentric, all continuous. But now, the passage that we have for today from the gospel kind of takes us back again to the time when Jesus was doing his public ministry, well before his crucifixion. And Jesus wanted to share some important information with his apostles. He was reminding them, he told them that he was going to leave them. But then he shared with them that he would send a power to be with them after he left. And that's the power that we call the Holy Spirit. I was thinking this week about how the Holy Spirit was present with Jesus throughout his ministry. Let me just give you some examples. We know that the Holy Spirit descended like a dove, we're told, upon Jesus as he was being baptized. And we hear that the Spirit led him out into the wilderness after he was baptized. And the Spirit was with him as he was being tempted by the devil. The Spirit was with Jesus, and the Spirit is with us. Now there's some really powerful words that are found in Scripture about the work of the Spirit. I just want to remind you about them. For Jesus knew that his time was short. He knew that he couldn't get everything done that he wished could be accomplished. And so he sent this power of the Spirit. Jesus said these words, Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. Jesus did many wonderful deeds while he was on earth. And yet he told us that if we believe in him and accept the power of the Holy Spirit, we will do more than Jesus did. It's really hard to believe. But that is exactly what he said. So today I'd encourage you, 
Not to limit the power of the Spirit, not to limit what the Spirit does in our lives. We often think about the Spirit as a presence. We say we feel the Spirit in this place. We even sing about it. We say, there's a sweet, sweet Spirit in this place, and I know that it's the Spirit of the Lord. And yes, the Spirit is like that. A kind of quiet presence. A guide, a comforter. But there are also times when the Spirit is a powerful force, like a big, the breath of God, or like a huge wind that blows, bringing all to follow the will of God. The Spirit has the power to do mighty things, and that Spirit gives us the power so that we also can do great things, greater than even Jesus did. Spirit is the breath of God. Now you feel the breath of God flowing through you today, giving you some new life in this world. May you feel the power of the Spirit working in you so that you can do wonderful things. And may you feel the presence of the Spirit guiding you and giving you great comfort. Amen.